Hi folks, thanks very much for joining me for this week's Stillwater tutorial. In the vise you see a competition special cormorant. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's at size 8. It's a heavy wire hook and it's in black nickel. Now, the 260 at size 8 actually fits in the competition gauge. Uh, so if you are going to go and do international rules competitions, this hook's absolutely fine. The thread I'm going to be using initially is uh, the uni thread. It's white and it's at 6 0 First thing I'm going to do then is a little bit of wax onto the thread. Just rub my fingers through it. And I'm going to start back, quite well back for the eye actually, a couple of millimetres back for the eye, and I'm going to get three or four wraps down. Then I can remove my waist at this point. Now for the rib of this fly, I'm using some flexi floss here. Uh, this one's a kind of browny colour. I'm sorry, I can't remember where I got it from. I think it might have been Bill McElroy actually, but uh, I'm not sure. I've had it for years. So I've already... Um, taking a strand of the flexi floss off and what I want to do is catch it just in on that bank of thread there just in the tip ever so gently and then once it's in you can really get some pressure on it now and stretch it out so that you're keeping your body fairly thin and I want nice touch and turns all the way up the shank Now, if you watch uh, a lot of my videos, you'll know that I'm not one for keeping it neat and touching turns and stuff, but on this fly, it is quite important that you do try and keep it as neat as possible. Now, for the body of the, the fly, I'm going to be using some Beavis. It's the P01 in medium, and it's a pearl tinsel. Now, if you don't have this and you've got Mylar, uh, Mylar works just as well. You get a slightly different effect, but it does work very well. So I'm going to catch that in at the base of the fly. And again, I'm just going to take my time here because I want my wraps to be nice and neat all the way up. Now, the reason I'm using a uh, white thread initially is it does make a difference to what you end up with. When you cover the mylar, if you put red down or orange down, you do get a different effect with each colour of thread. So it's worth bearing in mind when you're doing this, what you're trying to achieve. So I want a kind of clear, um, silvery flash in my fly and that's why I'm using the white. So next then, I'm going to bring my Lurex up and you want to have touch and turns all the way up to the body. You don't want any gaps and I don't know how well you can see on the camera, it's probably quite difficult but because I've used the white thread I can really see that I'm getting that shimmery fry like glint from the, the, the pearl lurex going over the white and as I said I have done it with red and oranges. Fire orange works very well actually. But um, I'm just showing you the white today. So once you've brought it to the front, where it meets your thread, lock it in place, a couple of turns in front, and then you can trim your mylar away. Okay, put that to the side for another one. Now, the, the flexi floss is pretty durable, but you have got to be careful. So my first turn with this, I want it to be on the back of the shank of the hook, and I want it to be very tight. So I'm pulling that round really tight, and then I'm going to have my first turn under quite a lot of tension onto the back of the fly. Now, as the next turn comes round, I'm slightly releasing the tension and then so on and so forth. Now, it's difficult to see on the camera, but with each turn, the rib is steadily getting thicker 
as it comes up towards the thorax area of the fly. And that's given me, the ribs giving me the taper effect that I want with this fly. And as I get near the top, nearly all the tension's out of the flexi floss, and I've got a nice thick rib. And then once that's in place, I can lock it in with my white thread. One for luck, get a couple again, a couple of turns in front to lock it in, and then you can remove your excess flexi floss. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I've got a nice taper going on there. I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, it's looking pretty good for where I'm sitting. Next then, I want to protect that. So I'm going to be using some uh, UV resin for this. Now, if you're tying a lot of them and uh, you want to use varnish, then you can do it in batches. But as I'm just tying one for uh, the demonstration, and to be perfectly honest, I would use, I would use resin anyway. The days of me using varnish is long gone actually. Just very occasionally for some buzzers. But that's about it. Everything else I just use the resins. They're so good now, you, you don't need to be uh, overthinking it. Cure it off. And you've got to make sure this is cured properly because uh, when you bring the marabou in afterwards, the last thing you want is marabou sticking to the body of your fly. So uh, just make sure it is completely cured and dry. That's looking good. Okay, next then, I'm going to be using some of the Comp Candy, and this is the Black Jack marabou. Uh, I've, used, I've used this quite a, a bit now, and uh, I still maintain it's probably the best marabou I've used and the only thing that comes near it is Dave Downey's stuff, but uh, it's really deep black, and you get to use it from the stem all the way up, all usable feathers. So I'm gonna be taking from my thumbnail to my knuckle, and just rip that straight off the stock. Put a little twist in, and remove the thick waste bit at the bottom. Now if you lick your thumb and forefinger, and just damp all that down. Just makes it a little bit easier when you're tying in at the head here, if you've damped it down. If you leave it, you can leave it fluffy, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So make sure you catch that in. There's nothing worse than when you're fishing and you pick up a fly and you're tying it on and then you pull that and the wing comes away for the fly. It's very annoying and uh, so always make sure you've caught in enough of the marabou. Now, I'm going to cast my white thread off at this point. Okay, so if you, if you are going to use this fly for competitions, as it was intended, uh, it's always best to measure wet the tail. But before I do that, I'm going to come in with my thumb and forefinger in my right hand, pinch down on the marabou, and just pinch it away. Now, I know from experience that that's easily fitting in the gauge, but uh, I would always advise you to check it against a gauge before it goes in your fly box. And then when you're on the water, it's always worth just checking again, just to make sure you're complying with the rules. You don't want to be caught out. Uh, next then, I'm going to add some Glowbrite number four to the head to give it a little uh, hot spot. But before I do that, I should mention that another variation of this, you can add jungle cock eyes, but it, I just feel that it's a bit too much jungle cock eyes in this hot red head, so uh, I, I do without it really. So what I'm going to do with my glow bright is catch a little bit in my finger like so, then I'm going to catch in from the front and work my way towards the rear.
Once I'm happy I've got several wraps down, I can just pull that away and then I can come in with my whip finish tool and finish the fly off. All that remains then is to uh, add varnish to the head. Before I do that, I'm just going to slick it back And how would I fish this? Um, generally I fish cormorants in teams, so I'd be fishing a four fly rig and we'd either fish four cormorants straight, probably on an intermediate, something like a fast glass, and just stroke it back or a fairly rapid figure of eight. Of course you can fish it as droppers on a washing line style rig. But uh, it works best, I find, as a pooling pattern. But this is a great um, top dropper fly. Uh, if you're fishing a team of cormorants, they don't always have to be the same. Uh, and this one just stands out as, a, as an attractor. I think it's the hot head, really brings fish to it. And if they don't like it, they turn and take the drabber pattern behind generally. There we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying what I'm doing. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button. It would mean a lot to me. See you all next time.